Hello friends, welcome back to the bench. Today we have a curious case of a Microsoft Surface Pro 4 model 1724. So this particular one uh, came from a some kind of school. So it is locked for Miss Vivian or Mrs. who knows. Um, I already performed a BIOS reset on it. So we don't we no longer have a protected BIOS. It, the disk can still be read. That means that a an encryption key or decryption key for the BitLocker is not stored in the BIOS. I always thought it was. I don't, I don't know for some reason I thought that the BIOS holds not only that but also a uh, Windows key, um, so you can reinstall Windows without without the Windows asking you for a key. I always thought it was in the BIOS, but that kind of proves that it, it's not, right? But where else would it be stored? Anyways, from there, after resetting the BIOS, uh, this one has, um, you know, I'm using the, the broken digitizer screen, so I also need a keyboard with a mouse, so I can operate it. Um, and the USB stick with Windows on it. And normally, you just, because we can't log in, so, uh, so normally you would just uh, hold down shift and, and hit restart. While holding the shift button, you'll be presented with a recovery screen. Right, and from the recovery screen, we select use device and use USB storage device. And that normally works. Sometimes um, pressing down the volume down button while booting will also cause it to boot from the, from the USB stick. But if that doesn't work, this should. But if it did work, I wouldn't be making a video. <laughs> Yeah, so we see that it didn't work because we have a spinning. So it's already booting to, to Windows. So it didn't start from the USB stick. So this is a little more tricky. In that case, what we need to do is shut it down. Check on the meter. It's still on until it goes to 140. Yeah, now it's 140, around 20 watts. That means the battery is nearly dead. Uh, so once it's off, we need to remove the NVMe. Okay, so we have NVMe out, connected to the adapter. So let's plug it in. All right, our disk now showed up as an offline. So we're gonna go ahead and switch it to online right click and hit online that will load load the disk load actually the disks logical disk and after it loads it says windows partition is bitlocker encrypted so we're just going to right click on it hit format quick format it will say that this is bit locked, so all the data will be will be lost. And that's pretty much what we want. So now our entire windows uh, will be removed. However, our recovery partition will be there and the system, uh, the EFI system partition will also be there. And um, that's where 
the recovery, the, the, the Windows recovery is stored and theoretically I would expect that if you start the computer like that after removing that partition, after formatting it uh, and start the recovery process, the computer should recover from that recovery partition, but it does not, or at least I was never um, successful doing that. As you can see, formatting might take a while, so let's give it a minute. Don't remove the drive before it is performed, um, or you know, then you have to just do it again because it's, it's just going to be invalid uh, region on the on the disk, on the, well, on disk, on NVMe. <laughs> it's not exactly a disk, right? Nothing's spinning over there, and nothing is in the shape of a disk. Okay, it doesn't give any sound or anything, so how I know it stopped, uh, or it finished, because the LED stopped blinking. Then to confirm, you can just open it and see if you can actually see the, the contents of the drive, which right now will be empty. Okay, now let's switch it to offline again, so we can remove it. It's offline, and there you go. That's all it took. Now, just in case, I'm not going to be putting the shield back on because it takes a while to remove it and you always risk bending it a little uh, when removing it, so I'm going to keep it like that for now. Now it's saying preparing automatic repair, so it will go directly into that blue recovery screen. No, but first it's diagnosing your PC. Well, let's see what it's going to find. Perhaps system missing? All right, it tried to repair and stuff, but we know it wouldn't. So in advanced options, we could uh, go to troubleshoot and just do reset PC, right? But that doesn't work. You would expect it to work because the partition is still there, the recovery partition, but it doesn't. So let's try this again. USB storage, use a device, USB storage, and let's see if it will boot from USB now. So we don't want to see the spinning uh, spinner over here. And since I'm using a very slow USB Oh, it didn't work. It also takes a long time uh, to read from it. So to install system using this uh, concentrator or hub, uh, it takes a while because it's really slow. But that's that's all I have. But it still it still didn't work. We still can't boot from the USB. Um. That is too bad. This normally works, but I guess this one will not be recovered. That is too bad. Uh, let's um, hold down the minus button as well. I don't think that's going to do anything, but yeah. it's just a single, single blink from this one. So it detected the USB but it will not boot from it for some reason. Some of them are like that. Uh, so far this is the... Yeah, most of them won't boot when you just press the volume down button and hold it. Uh, but if that doesn't work, it usually works when you just remove the main partition and, and restart it like, like so. All right, use USB device and USB storage. That usually works. It doesn't in this case. So, sorry. 
this device. So the, the only option for this device to recover uh, is to swap the SSD. So I have another one over here, which I performed the same procedure and it worked. And I have one more over here, same procedure worked. So this NVMe now has the blank system and everything. So if we now flip those, uh, let's see if we can, oh no, we can actually just turn it off like this. And let's wait for the power to drop to 21. There you go. Now it's off. See, that's why I didn't put the, uh, the shield. <laughs> Because it doesn't always work. Okay, and we have Windows 10 Pro on this one, so this one's good. Now, we're just going to do the same thing for this SSD. It scared me for a second because it was grabbing only 800 milliamps, but that is normal if your battery is fully charged. <laughs> okay, and the same thing. Advanced options, use USB storage. So this one should boot. That means I can use this one which I just did. I used this one to create an NVMe to put in that one, All right? So sometimes the device won't let you, won't let you boot the way you want to boot, but there's always a lot you can do. Yeah, now we can see this one's blinking steadily. So this, since this is a very old, very crappy USB hub, this will take forever. The installation on this, I don't know, about two hours, maybe a little less than two hours. Um, but mind that this one also doesn't, doesn't boot. If you hold down minus volume down button, it still won't boot from the USB. The only way to boot it from USB is to go to recovery and select the device to boot from. But as you can see, it does not work on this one. So, if that is your case, the only way that I know of <laughs> is to use the other device that allows you to, to, reset the, to reset the system, to reset the device to the factory settings. It's basically a factory state. So what we do, uh, we clean the BIOS and we reset the Windows to Windows 10 Pro. And that is the service. If you're interested in it, reach out. I will have the uh, eBay listing as well. Uh, but if you if you need this for your Surface Pro 4 model 1724, reach out to me and we'll figure something out. Um, unfortunately, the repair as, uh, as will be listed on eBay uh, comes with a new screen. So the price of the new screen will be calculated into this into this service. And that is mainly because there's no reliable way to remove the screen without any damage. And as you can see, this one, well, this one is uh, cracked. And actually, as you can see, I removed it cleanly, even with the crack. I don't know if you can even see the crack. It's there. It, it goes through here. Mm, yeah. There. So 
I'm not worried about cracking the screen. I can remove it completely without cracking, but digitizer will likely stop working. So the screen, as you can see, works perfectly fine, but unless you want to carry a keyboard along with your Surface Pro, you need a new screen. <laughs> Anyways, that is the repair. If you're interested, uh, reach out. And uh, thank you guys very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.